Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, a Beantown Friday edition of the Ice Guys. Friday, April the 5th, Ian Cameron, Alex C. Smith, presented by, of course, Boston Hemp, Inc., ready to break down the Friday NHL card. Six games on tap uh, here tonight. A bigger Friday slate than normal, usually two, three games tops on a Friday. Not tonight. Six games and plenty of playoff implications on the line here tonight for the uh, Friday slate. So looking forward to breaking those down. Uh, Jimmy Murphy who uh, is often with us on Fridays. He'll be jo- dropping in and joining us a little bit later in the show. So looking forward to catching up uh, with our guy, uh, Jimmy Murphy, in just a little bit. First, though, of course, as always, we'll start with looking back at a very uh, busy uh, Thursday night. And really, I can't complain. It was a pretty good, profitable night overall. It was a solid uh, Thursday night for the most part. Uh, it started with uh, Tampa Bay and Montreal. I think there was a combination between me, Alex, and Matt uh, on yesterday's show of over bifecta recommendations, over trifecta recommendations, team totals in that game. And whatever you bet over wise, you hit in that game, whether it was Tampa team total, Montreal. I was on the Montreal team total. Uh, and of course, the uh, first period over, first period, both teams to score, full game over, all cash in. Matt Robinson's best bet was the first period over last night with Lightning and Canadians. It cashes in. Tampa Bay continues to roll, uh, continues to play great hockey at the right time of year. No, uh, Matt Tompkins in net and no Vasilevsky, no problem, uh, as they roll past Montreal uh, by a score of 7-4 to four last night. Uh, and like I said about Caden Primo, that's what you get sometimes. You get some, you've had some great moments, and then you've had some not-so-great moments, and Alex kind of hinted at it yesterday that, yes, the uh, recent performances were better, but look at the competition. Uh, look at the yeah. opposition that he faced, and it was a step up last night against Tampa Bay, who are playing great hockey, and he struggled a lot more uh, in that one. So a 7-4 Tampa win uh, last night. One of the results that surprised me last night, Boston just rolling Carolina in the first period, jumping out to a 3 nothing lead in that game, and they really didn't look back. Uh, they put it on cruise control. They defended well. It was a very solid road win. Uh, for the Boston Bruins, getting the job done four to one uh, over the uh, Carolina Hurricanes, uh, very very impressive. And that's now, if you look back at this Boston team now, for the better part of their games and their schedule since that moment when Jim Montgomery bag skated his team in that practice, they played a lot better. It's almost like he's trying to get them into that playoff mode. And I think one thing you have to talk about, Alex, with Boston, and I'll get your thoughts now on this, is that last year cruising into the playoffs just not a lot of stress on the Bruins down the stretch because they had everything wrapped up and there was nothing at all to play for and maybe that hurt them a little bit when they played Florida in the first round and they couldn't rev it up to that next level I think they're looking a little bit more playoff ready for that first round going in this year no because they haven't been able to put it on cruise control they're trying to nail down a division still I think that's going to help Boston yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we talked about, you know, yesterday with Dallas. You know, that yeah. that's important. It's important to have momentum going into the playoffs. We see it in all different sports where teams kind of back their way into the postseason. This is the sport and 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 the Stanley Cup playoffs are a tournament where you cannot back into it and then find a way to win. You have to have some hot momentum rolling. And uh yeah, so it's it's good that Boston, like I said, they were, you know, in the catbird seat last year, just kind of cruising through, setting records maybe not taking things as seriously. And then all of a sudden you ran to a Florida team who had to fight every single game down the stretch just to get in, still riding that hot wave of momentum. And they took that all the way to winning the Eastern Conference. So, yeah, the momentum is what you need uh, heading into the playoffs. You need a good team. We always talk about a hot goalie. But if you can just get you know team chemistry and a full team momentum going, that can take you a long way as well. Yeah, great win last night indeed for the Bruins. Uh, in Carolina, to beat them like that, it's not easy to do, uh, and they were able to. Uh, Florida, I guess it was bound to happen, right? They were due for a good game, and they were due to put some of these struggles behind them. In Ottawa, you know, they had their nice little run, their win streak snapped in Minnesota the other night, coming back home off that road trip and put the two together, and it was just uh, all Florida last night, start to finish, 6 to nothing. Uh, they shut out the uh, Ottawa Senators uh, in that game. 
Um, pretty tough if you had the over in that game because it's six nothing, and that's the dreaded final score. And you're always worried about that when it's five nothing, six nothing going into the third period. It cost me the Edmonton Dallas live over five and a half the other night. Why did it not cash? Because Dallas is sitting on the lead, and you know Edmonton's not got that great, you know. <laughs> incentive to try to make a game of it because they're already too far behind down five zips so uh, that's what can happen sometimes uh, overs go to die at times as far as those blowout situations and we saw that in ottawa last night yeah and that's the thing too i mean you mentioned even going back with boston carolina that five and a half if you, yep. you're getting that in pocket seeing three nothing the first period you think you're doing good and all of a sudden four one final so it, it's tough with some of these and that's why we've preached so much and of course as we get into the playoffs about live wagering and, and yep. this is the time of year now, just like at the beginning of the season, we always talk about, ah, feel things out, wait for the pace, see how things are going, and then you could jump in live and, and grab a number. Kind of have to maybe get back to that in, down the stretch here, uh, these last, what, 15 or so days before the playoffs, where, you know, we have to kind of just watch and see because just because something takes off running right away it doesn't mean it's going to continue at that pace all the way through. Exactly right. Uh, and uh, the right live unders. Live unders when it's like a 3 nothing game. You know, those make a lot of sense because especially if it's a team that can defend, you know, and end up holding on to a lead. So that's something you might be able to see moving forward uh, with uh, uh, good live situations, betting wise, going into the playoffs. Especially, especially with, and we got a couple of these matchups. We talk about teams that are fighting for playoff positioning, fighting for points. If things are going haywire early, you know, both coaches are going to go be go in their locker rooms and say, hey, we need to settle shit down. And yep. so you can definitely find some key spots where if you see two, three, even four goals in the, in the first period uh, between teams that are still competing, then you, you will can definitely have some opportunities for some live unders. There's no question uh, about that. Uh, uh, what else do we see last night? The Islanders, look, we, the one thing we got right about this game, obviously I took a shot with Columbus and the team total, and to not cash at least the team total was very frustrating because they got the two goals in the first period and they didn't score after that, uh, the Blue Jackets. But the Islanders get the 4-2 win there. Uh, Tarasov gets injured in the first period. Jet Greaves having to take over uh, in that game last night. He actually played very well. Islanders racked up over 40 shots. Uh, he gave the Islanders a chance. Not a goaltending issue. They just didn't score enough Columbus. But the Islanders, you know, as expected, I didn't think it was going to be easy for them, and they needed an empty net goal to put that one away. 4-2 for the Islanders there uh, in that one. Pittsburgh-Washington, one of the most important games of the night, and the Penguins keep their playoff push going. 4-1 win over the Capitals. Capitals are on fumes right now. Capitals look like they're fading a little bit. This has been a rough week for them. And when I watched that game, and I watched it start to finish, five on five, you know, they're having a hard time scoring right now. And this is what the issue we thought would be with them at throughout the course of the season earlier in the year, that, you know, if you're not going to see Ovechkin and you're not going to see, um, you know, Oshi and guys like that scoring for you, are you going to get, like Milano and these guys have been great at times, McMichael and uh, LaPierre and some of these depth players, but they've gone quiet. And I'll tell you what's also hurt. They are getting nothing right now out of Max Pacioretty. Absolutely nothing. And it's unfortunate. We're all hoping that coming back from all these injuries, he can sort of reclaim some of the form he once had. I haven't seen it, uh, unfortunately, from uh, Max Pacioretty. And uh, like I said, if he doesn't get going, and if this team doesn't snap out of this little funk they're in, like that old uh, gif and meme we saw with Max years ago, they're going to be patio ready uh, pretty soon. <laughs> Uh, as far as the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs are concerned, because their spot, their grip on a playoffs, well, they don't have a grip on a playoff spot. They're not in one now after last night's loss. The Islanders have got third in the Metro. They're actually tied in points with the Flyers at 83 points, but because the Islanders have the ROW, tiebreaker, regulation and overtime wins, the Islanders have third in the Metro. Flyers slip to second wild card right now. Tampa, of course, still has the first wild card. So it's Islanders 83, Flyers 83. Those two teams have third in the Metro, second wild card, respectively. Then you've got the Capitals at 82, one point behind both the Isles and the Flyers. Red Wings at 82, one point behind the Flyers and the Isles. And now Pittsburgh, after that win last night, two points behind the Islanders and the Flyers at 81. They're still very much alive. And uh, Sidney Crosby is doing everything in his power to drag the team into the playoffs right now and a solid 4-1 win. And you know who's also doing a great job trying to drag him in? Alex Nedeljkovic. He's played yep. very well the last few games for Pittsburgh. Yeah. He's clearly become the guy in net for Mike Sullivan 
and the Penguins. Tristan Jari is the forgotten entity right now. They're riding the hot hand, and the hot hand right now is Alex Nedeljkovic. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, you know, you look at those signings, and, you know, Tristan Jari was one of Dubas' first uh, signings, re-signing him for five years, and I thought that was a little too long, and now you go, you know, getting the Delcovic right after that, and he ends up being the guy. So you're in a good position right now, obviously, with that. Riding Delcovic as long as you can. Make him your game one starter. You know you have Tristan Jari, who has playoff experience, to come in if he should falter in the first game or two. So, you know, we talk about how we like to find a goalie and stick with one. But Pittsburgh's in that situation, and certainly, of course, because they have to fight now just to even try to get into the playoffs. Uh, you know, keep your rotations, you know, as, as you're doing. But, you know, if the Delco begins up being the guy, so be it. You got to run with what's hot right now. We talked about that Florida. That's what Florida did last year. No one expected Alex Lyon to be anything. Doesn't mean he has to be the guy down the stretch. But if he can get you where you need to be right now, then that's who you roll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, she's out, Andy. But my point is, you know, they, they miss him uh, definitely in the uh, lineup. And uh, you look at, uh, like I say, the depth scoring has tailed off. I mean, Ovechkin got their only goal. Uh, last night so they're having a harder time putting the puck in the net and they're also giving up a lot more goals lately that's a concern the defense is springing leaks and the goaltend charlie lindgren's been run through the wall we're going to get to washington in a bit because they're playing again tonight against carolina he's absolutely fucking stuck right now carberry the head coach lindgren needs a blow he needs a break he can't keep playing like this i mean he just needs a break he's struggling right now he's not playing well he's playing too many games now but you have zero confidence in the other guy Darcy Kemper, which is why Charlie Lindgren's getting all these starts. So very interesting call tonight with what Washington does in between the uh, pipes right now. Uh, the other games last night, as we continue the recap, Colorado, nice job by them. Rebounded from that loss against Columbus, where really they got goalie. It's not like they played awful against Columbus. Tarasov was tremendous, but Colorado rebounds 5-2 win against the uh, Minnesota Wild. Uh, last night. It was another solid game from Eustace Oninen, who continues to just uh, pile up these pretty solid outings in net for the uh, avalanche when he gets the opportunity nashville with a six to three win against st louis that might just about do it for the st louis blues uh, i think pretty much they had to at least get a point you know out of that game uh, we know it wasn't going to be easy against a good team like nashville but losing six three like that not good defensively not their best game not bennington's best game either what a time for him to have definitely probably one of his worst games in the last month or so but uh, six to three the score in favor of nashville there the good news is from a betting standpoint other than the Blues money line not cashing in, everything else did, you know, except that I did have a piece of the draw slamal as well, actually, but everything else was great. Team total for the Blues, first period over, first period both teams to score, full game over, over trifecta. It continues to be just an over series with the Blues and the Predators. That's definitely something you're going to want to remember uh, when these teams meet up again uh, in the future. Winnipeg 5-2 win against uh, the uh, Calgary Flames last night. Good start for Calgary, but they got into penalty trouble. It really allowed Winnipeg to get their game going. Uh, and offensively, that's a good sign from the Jets now. Back-to-back -back games, we've started to see them put the puck in the net. And definitely, Gabe Velarde starting to get more comfortable since his return from injury. He gets the hat trick for Winnipeg in the victory last night. Good game from him. Ehlers with a couple of points. Just a really solid game from the uh, Winnipeg Jets. And shows you they've got the offense. You don't always see it consistently. But if Velarde's going to play that way, certainly makes this team a lot more dangerous and they get the 5-2 win uh, over the Calgary Flames. I really can't put too much fault on Dustin Wolf. He had to face 45 shots. That's what you get right now with Calgary. They're just giving up way too many quality chances, way too many shots. Their goalies have to face way too much stress now on a nightly basis. And Dustin Wolf, unfortunately, had to face that last night in the 5-2 loss to the uh, uh, Winnipeg Jets. And again, Calgary's defense since losing Tanif and Hannafin it's just been uh, not anywhere close to as good. And then the last game, not much to say there. L.A., workmanlike, not pretty, but they get the 2-1 to one win against San Jose. Unfortunately, the one blemish on the day for me, the main blemish, was that the uh, we used this as the best bet, and it felt, falls short 2-1 uh, to one with the uh, Kings getting the win. They pretty much put the game on cruise control themselves. Shutdown mode after getting that 2 nothing lead, and they hung on for the 2-1 uh, win uh, against San Jose. And San Jose continues to be the one team David Riddick plays very well against this year. He's actually played very well all season long, the multiple starts he's had against the Sharks. By the way, as far as totals go, obviously not every full game went over the total. Sharks-Kings stayed under. Penguins-Capitals stayed under. I think there was maybe another game or two that also might have stayed under for the full game. But every first period last night went over the total. 9-0 and to the first period over 
last night. We'll see if that's something that is just a blip on the radar. Is it only a one-night thing? Or is this something that maybe can carry over to tonight and beyond as we inch closer to the Stanley Cup playoffs? Uh, before we get to Friday, Alex, anything you want to say more on the uh, games from last night? No, like I said, I mean, pretty much kind of touched on it. Like I said, Tampa Bay and Montreal, that was a, a big profitable game for me, as was St. Louis uh, and Nashville. Like I said, you know, have the overtrap like this cashing through uh, in a big way in that game. And, uh, you know, like I said, 9-0, and uh, it's an incredible feat. Didn't have that many first period over. That was on, I think, four of them all together. But, uh, yeah, if you were parlaying them, I know some people do that. If you're tying them in, you, you had a, a hell of a night with that. So uh, always nice to see streaks like that on, on a given evening. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I know Chris Otto mentioned it as well uh, with the 9-0 and to the uh, first period over. Certainly, it ended up being a very profitable night uh, with those uh, first period overs. All right, let's get into Friday night. It is a six-game, uh, half-dozen uh, game slate on this uh, Friday night. And we will begin with the Washington Capitals taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, Carolina minus 270 uh, home favorites. Total in this game, six pretty much across the board. Carolina off that 4-1 loss against the Boston Bruins. It's funny. Both of these teams have kind of 500 records on a back-to-back. -back. Of course, both teams are on the second night of back-to-back. -back. But if you actually look at the full season, Washington was tremendous early in the season, second night of a back-to-back. -back. They haven't been as good later in the season, second night of a back-to-back. -back. Carolina struggled early in the season, second night of a back-to-back, -back, but they've actually been better post-January on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. So right now, actually, Carolina's played better hockey on the second night of a back-to-back -back since the beginning of the year. And to me, when you look at Washington, you know, they've played a lot of hockey this week, back-to-back -back for them. You look at some of the, you know, the box score of last night's 4-1 loss to Pittsburgh for Washington, and you see guys like Ovi and John Carlson, and there's a lot of tread on those tires for both of those guys. They're well into their 30s. They had to play 25 minutes last night, both of them. I mean, that's that's a lot of ice time. You're going to have to turn around. You're going to have to play here tonight against a Carolina team. It's not going to be in a great mood, obviously, with the way they played last night against the Bruins. And like I said, it looks like Washington is fading a little bit. Like they're, they're, they're not scoring. Their defense is crumbling. Their goaltending, the workload of Charlie Lindgren that I just talked about uh, in the recap is clearly getting to him and affecting him right now. And like I said, with Sp Spencer Carberry's got one of the most difficult decisions he's got to make as far as his goaltending tonight because he's stuck. Lindgren needs a break. He's struggling mightily. How can you go to him tonight on a back-to-back -back after he played last night? And he's been scuffling, and he's clearly fatigued. Clearly fatigued. You can tell with Charlie Lindgren. He's not tracking pucks from the blue line. Two of those shots last night that Pittsburgh scored on were from the blue line, and he just didn't track the puck. That's fatigue. That's just that's definitely some fatigue setting. And those are fatigue mistakes by a goaltender. And you can definitely see that right now from Charlie Lindgren. But the problem is you need to give him a break. But the other option is Darcy Kemper, who has been atrocious. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable the fall in Darcy Kemper, who is a Stanley Cup winning goaltender. Remember, just two years ago and had a very good season and a very good playoffs as well for the Colorado Avalanche. It's amazing to see. And now. With the season on the line, you got a coach that has zero confidence to even put him in there. But he might have to tonight. And if you ask me, I haven't seen confirmation yet, but I have that feeling he's going to get a shot tonight simply because Lindgren needs a break. And I think we are probably on the back-to-back -back going to see Darcy Kemper here. But look at this. I mean, he gave up four goals and got pulled the last time we saw him uh, start for uh, Carolina he uh, against Buffalo. Uh, that was a replacement game, I think, after for Lindgren. But starting wise, he gave up the four to Carolina and got pulled back on March 22nd. It was that crazy 7 6 game uh, in Washington. Seven goals allowed to Edmonton, 7 2 loss. And he's basically been good to allow at the very least three goals in like six or seven straight starts coming into this game tonight. So that's definitely something that is problematic right now for the. Uh, Washington Capitals, um, and we'll have to see what he, what, where they go because 3.32 goals against average and 888 save percentage is not what you want to see from a, a goaltender that you might be putting in there tonight in a game you almost have to have, but that might be what Spencer Carberry has to do because Lindgren simply needs a break right now and a rest. So it's going to be interesting to see the decision. What I do know is I think we get Carolina playing well. Uh, this is a team that you know takes the losses very seriously. And especially when they're at home again off a home loss, 
you know, you would think Carolina will play well tonight, and certainly they could be looking at a Washington team that, as we've talked about as well, the defensive side of the puck has just not been as good. You know, their offense has slowed down. They're starting to become one of those teams that their five-on-five offense in particular hasn't been as good. A lot of their offense has been power play related during this four-game losing streak. They've scored six goals in the last four games during this losing streak. Three of the six goals were on the power play. Tells you all you need to know right there. The five-on-five offense has gone a little bit dormant here for the Washington Capitals. So Carolina off the loss last night. I do think they respond here. I'm going to do a little something rare here, and that's a full game minus one puck line. So that's a full game Carolina minus one puck line minus 126 is what you can get with that. Uh, I think they get the I know Washington's the desperate team playing for their playoff hopes, but we always say must win doesn't equal will win, and Capitals just aren't in good form. They're in a brutally tough spot. Back to back with this aging team. And guys like Ovechkin and Carlson have played 25 minutes last night in that game against Pittsburgh. It's not what you want to see. So for me, I'm going to go Carolina minus one, minus 126 in reg. And I'm going to tack on the team total as well. Uh, over three and a half plus 100 for the Carolina Hurricanes in this game. And I don't care who's in net. If they go to Lindgren on a back-to-back, so be it. If they go to Kemper, so be it. I think the, the either goalie can give up four right now to this uh, Carolina team because the way I see it, Lindgren struggling, he's hit a wall. And if they go with Kemper, he's been brutal much of the season. He's been bad the last month. And he's given up at least three, I think, in six or seven straight starts. So not good, in my opinion, for Washington. So I'm going to split it up with those two. The minus one puck line, the team total over three and a half. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Capitals, Hurricanes. So I have one play, and I'm probably going to add the second, which would be your team total uh, over with Carolina. But I like the draw in this spot just because these two teams have played each other tight, whether it was a 2-1 game last year going past the regulation or that crazy 7-6 game uh, that we saw just a couple of weeks ago. These teams have played each other tight. They both need the points. This is a, a good draw season spot. And I was able to get plus 365 earlier this morning. But you mentioned what Spencer Carberry has got to decide. He does have an option in door number three as they recall Hunter Shepard. So, you know, it's saying I, I'm reading this tweet that was uh, posted where Kemper tweaked his back in practice yesterday, skated this morning. So they wanted to bring somebody else up. That we know it won't be lingering, it seems like, based on what I'm reading. It seems like it's either going to be uh, Shepard or Kemper. And like I said, either way, I don't trust them. I don't trust Hunter Shepard in a huge spot for them that could make or break the season. I don't trust Kemper in his current form. So I'll add Carolina team total over three and a half. I might actually play a little bit bigger than what I played the draw for. Yeah, Super Forecaster says Hunter Shepard is. Yeah, he is. He is with the team right now. That tells you all you need to know. My goodness, that the fact they might throw that kid in there, you know, yeah. in a game of this magnitude with season on the line for Washington. It's not like they're out if they lose or if they they're in, if they win, but it's an important, every game is important right now for Washington. And the fact that they've lost so much confidence in Darcy Kemper, that Hunter Shepard's even in consideration right now tells you all you need to know. Uh, as far as props, I like Jarvis tonight, to score a goal. I like Gensel uh, over one and a half points as well. Uh, that's been a pretty reliable prop uh, for the uh, hurricanes. Maybe a little Jordan Martin nuke, just because he has uh, moved up the lineup for, Carolina in recent games for Washington you know there's really uh, Ovechkin really is the one guy right now because Pacioretty doesn't give you anything uh even LaPierre and Milano and McMichael some of these other forwards have kind of cooled off a little bit lately for Washington so I think if you're going to trust anyone trust the grade eight uh Alex Ovechkin if you're going to look anywhere for props for Washington here in this game tonight. All right, next up, we've got the New York Rangers and the Detroit Red Wings. New York minus 135 road favorites, six the total in this game. I know a couple of days ago, I don't think the Devils and Rangers game had even ended yet. That crazy game, the line brawl off the hop. It was obviously a very physical, intense, emotional game. Ranger fan supreme, uh, John Massey, one of our favorites here uh, on the ice guys of our fam, uh, he didn't waste time to, uh, in our DM the other night saying, you know, bet Detroit <laughs> on Friday night uh, against the uh, New York Rangers saying, and, and, you know, situationally it stands out. You know, it really does. I mean, you got the Rangers off this emotional cauldron that they had against the New Jersey Devils the other night. It's a tricky spot to ask this team to play uh, a good hockey game once again against a Detroit team that is actually, even though they're off a road trip, they haven't played since Monday against Tampa. So the schedule makers really did Detroit a favor here. Gave them three days off 
following the end of that road trip. So they've really had enough replenish and recovery time, in my opinion, Detroit to be in a better spot in that first game home off a road trip. I know it's Malinsky special, says uh, Fade Detroit here, but I think the three days off following the end of that trip helps them out here quite a bit. And it's kind of negated and canceled out by, like I said, the um, the New York Rangers here uh, with coming off that game against the uh, uh, New Jersey Devils the other night. So uh, I'd be careful here with the New York Rangers in this game. And they've already announced, too, Jonathan Quick will be in net tonight for the uh, New York Rangers. And I don't want to make it sound like he's gone into the shits or anything because he hasn't been that bad. But he's not been as effective and as on top of his game as he was in October and to December, by the way. So keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, another thing, too, with uh, Quick, you look at these recent performances, he's usually given up, you know, three more often. He certainly struggled a little bit against Arizona the last time we saw him start over the weekend. Now, the Rangers won 8-5, so a lot of um, run support, if you will, for Jonathan Quick from the Rangers against the Coyotes, but he still gave up five goals in that game. So that is a little bit concerning here. I think Detroit, you know, I was in, look, not many people, not many teams are beating the Tampa Bay lightning right now, the way Tampa's playing Detroit did Detroit went in there and beat them four, two on Monday night. So you got to give the red wings credit. And we've been, I was, I was just stressing for such a long time to Derek Lalone, give Alex Lyon a break a few weeks ago. He gave Alex Lyon a one week break. Uh, and that's about how long he was out. And sure enough, since he's been back from that little hiatus, Alex Lyons looked a lot fresher and a lot better uh, in between the pipes for the uh, Detroit Red Wings. He'll get the start tonight uh, in this game uh, for the Red Wings uh, in this matchup. Yeah, I'm going to go with the full game over. I don't know about the first period over and, and first period both teams to score. I kind of do lean over by Fecta and trifecta, but I really like the full game over more than anything. The one thing about these Rangers games lately We've been burned a little bit with these first period overs. They haven't always been that right out of the gate. The scoring starts to happen, you know, type of team lately. So I prefer the full game over. I like Detroit here in this spot. I'm going to give them a chance here. I know it's tough to go against the Rangers, but I just worry coming off the devil uh, emotional cauldron. This is not going to be their A game tonight. And they have quick instead of Shesterkin. So I like Detroit here plus 115. And I'm also going to go with the team total on Detroit. You know, it's a very cheap price. It's over two and a half, minus 135 uh, at Pinnacle. Uh, and definitely because I like Detroit a little bit in this game, plus 115, I'm definitely splitting it up with the team total uh, over two and a half here, minus 135. Because we saw it again with the Blues last night when I split it. Blues and team total, Blues team total hits even though they lose the game. And that can happen. That happens a lot, especially when you bet these underdogs and their team total is over two and a half. You'd be surprised how many times they lose the game, but they still score three goals. So that's what I think here tonight. Win or lose Detroit, I think they can get me three goals tonight against this Rangers team that's got to be on fumes a little bit physically and emotionally coming after, coming up after that uh, New Jersey game on Wednesday night. Uh, Alex is back with us. Alex, what do you think here? Rangers, Red Wings. Yeah, that's, this is another team total I need to add. I already had uh, Detroit... Uh, plus, actually got plus 123 earlier this morning, so we've seen mo more money coming in on that. They like said this is a spot John Massey kind of uh, alluded to us, and that's kind of the reason, too, why I liked, you know, with yesterday, I was talking about looking at Carolina, looking at some Carolina uh, for the President's Trophy as well. That was predicated on I thought Carolina would win last night and maybe get a point out of this game tonight tied with a Ranger loss, which would help kind of move things up, so that plan was kind of hurt yesterday by uh, Carolina losing and also losing in regulation. But uh, that was the, the thought process behind that. So, like I said, this is the time of year where we start having one bet kind of set up two or three different things. But uh, I still like Detroit here to get the job done. Like I said, having the, the days of rest at home, that's going to help them. They're sharp and focused. This should be uh, their most focused effort of the season. You know, they're playing playoff games now. This is, this is a playoff game against a playoff team. And that's the way they need to treat it as such. And so, uh, I like Detroit here in the, the spot, especially going up against Quick, because Quick's been fine, had a fantastic year, but he's you know due for kind of a, a softer uh, game, and I think this could be it tonight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Red Wing team total and money line split for me uh, in this one, and like I said, I like the over six for the uh, full game. As the Rangers have suddenly been an over machine, my goodness, I think it's something like nine and one or nine and two in their last ten or eleven games to the over. So 
Uh, I think the only concern is Detroit's kind of gone the other way. I mean, they've gone a, they've gone under now in a few games in a row, but I think tonight it's going to be more of an up and down affair. I can definitely see that. There are a lot of props. I like, how do you not go with Sir Patrick Kane, you know, against the Rangers, his old team? Why not? And he's starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, when you look at it, maybe you look at um, uh, Dylan, Dylan Larkin and Patrick Kane. I stand by it. Those are the two guys that are going to carry the load offensively. They've been in the big games that are big, big time you know, players on this team. Larkin shows up for the big game. Larkin hasn't been in the playoffs much, if at all. Um, but I know he shows up in big games because that's the kind of c character he is as the captain of this team. That guy always plays his butt off every big game, uh, win or lose. And so Dylan Larkin's always worth a look, in my opinion. Patrick Kane, given the opponent, and he started to heat up as well the last few games. And then for the Rangers, like I don't think Detroit's shutting them down or shutting them out. I think the Rangers have some good, like Kako's starting to heat up. Uh, Lafreniere, you got to look at right now. The goals, the points, he's really starting to cook for the uh, New York Rangers about time uh, as well for him to get going. But those are the two props, definitely from a Ranger standpoint, uh, that stand out to me uh, to target for this uh, matchup here with the Rangers and the Red Wings, which should be a great game. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it here tonight with the uh, Friday night slate. But uh, yeah, Lafreniere, and like I said, maybe a look toward Capo Caco as well for he's been stepping up. And I'm never going to say, you know what, don't bet Artemi Panarin over one and a half points. It's been a pretty damn good bet for the New York Rangers during this incredible run. And Chris Otto, that's there you go, Chris. You're making me look smart. Six straight first period unders, which is why I'm not on the first period looks tonight with the uh, Red Wings and the Rain. It's not just that. It's the Rangers have not always been a first period over reliable team lately. Full games, though, have been flying. A lot of Rangers games, Alex, second and third period is when the goals have been flooding in. Yep. Not so much the first period. So this is definitely a game where you yeah, sit and wait, and if you have a first period under, hope you cash that, and then look for something uh, to the over. Like I said, at the start of the second, maybe both teams will score a second period. Yep. So full game over at a cheaper price, super cheaper number. So. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a good totals approach uh, with this game. All right, another huge game tonight. This is essentially season over for the Buffalo Sabers. You know, if they lose this game, they're probably already not making the playoffs. Like I don't see it happening. But you can absolutely say it's done. Dunzo if they lose, especially in regulation tonight to the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Buffalo minus 125 home favorites. Uh, six the total here in this game. Of course, this has been a week uh, to remember for John Tortorella simply because he's been uh, at the forefront of so many press conferences lately. The tirade against the Isle after the Islander game. The incredible outpouring of his heart and soul. Wednesday, which was one of the best press conferences in terms of brutal honesty I've ever heard. Uh, it was just spectacular to hear him talk in those words saying, I haven't done a good enough job taking us to this next level, getting them ready to play at this level. Uh, and basically saying, you know what, people don't think we should be here. We're too young. We're not ready for this. We're here. He says, let's embrace it. Let's, let's try to see if we've got another notch in our, if we can take this to another gear, if we can go to second gear and third gear, well, the Flyers, the good news for them is the one thing I want to point out with Philly, too, during this little rough patch, is they played a lot of hockey in a short period of time. But the schedule has finally settled down for them coming into this game tonight, where they haven't played since that Islander game on Monday night with that brutal second period that Tortorella was livid about. And now they've been off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They've gotten three days of practice time. They've had this little kumbaya session with Torts and the players from the looks of things. Let's just let's huddle together and let's figure this out and let's talk about it. You can tell that's what's happened. You know, the last few days since that Islander game, I got a gut feel. They, they, they play their ass off tonight, Philadelphia. It's just a gut feel to me that they do. And I like what's happening with their goaltending. Cause to me and jo John Tortorella, you could say what you want. I don't know about throwing the Russian kid in there. The, when he did it second period of a big game like that uh, against the New York Islanders, First ever NHL appearance to put him in that kind of spot. That's pretty tough. But Samuel Larson right now, he's hit a wall. There's no doubt. I mean, Samuel Larson needs a break. He does. And I think John Tortorella knows that. And that's why he's not starting tonight, Samuel Larson. He needs a break. He hasn't been good, you know, the last few games. You know, Chicago lit him up, for Christ's sake. No offense, Alex. But, you know, that was uh, that was a problem right there uh, for uh, Samuel Larson. Uh, he needs a break. He's And look, this guy's given it is all everything to this team, but he never thought he'd play this many games because nobody thought Carter Hart would be indicted for that stuff. 
years ago in the scandal and be off the team and not be even in the mix here with the Flyers and put the Flyers in a brutal spot to put Erson in for all these games, to have Sandstrom have to be the backup. He's been rough every time he's played, Felix Sandstrom. So that's why they went to Russia, went to the mother Russia there, went to get this guy that they uh, signed from the uh, KHL and bring him now to the NHL team because that's how weak and feeble right now and vulnerable the goaltending is, that they need a pick-me-up. The question is now that he's going to make his first start tonight in the NHL, his first official start, can the great Ivan Fedotov be that guy tonight for the Philadelphia Flyers uh, in this big-time start? How about this for pressure cooker? First NHL start, and it's a game of this magnitude as you're hanging on by the, your fingernails by one point over two teams for that final wild card spot. Is this kid ready for it? Well, guess what? I had the uh, good fortune, I guess, of hearing some of the flyer post game the other night. And Brian Boucher, after the Islander game, who knows a thing or two about goaltenders, talking about Fedotov, he said, I have no doubt he's ready for this moment. He's ready for this moment. He looked uh, unflappable in between the pipes, he said. Confident. And the shots in that second period, Alex, when Fedotov entered that game for Erson against the Islanders, were like 17-3 to for the Islanders. He's literally the only reason the Flyers had a chance to get that game to overtime in the third period. He was that good. He did every he was remarkable saves. Islanders were just all over the Flyers. It was a great first impression. Now, it's his first start this time. We'll see if he's ready for it, but I think he'll play well. And this is, to me, going back to what we've seen all year from Buffalo. How many times do we get impressed with a great win like they had against Washington in the last game and then shit the bed the next game? It's just happened way too much to Buffalo this year. So I like Philadelphia, especially in the first period. I think Philly in the first period, I like that look. I like that look quite a bit. To come out strong, they bombed Buffalo 3-0 in the first period in Buffalo the last time these teams played. I remember, and I kind of like Buffalo in that spot. I'm like, what the hell's happened here? Flyers just rolled them in the first period. 3-0, they ended up winning that game 5-1. I think this is actually a moment, and I know they've had so much internally, the Couturier benching, the Couturier scratching, and what do the players think of that? Does it rip apart the dressing room and all this gobbledygook that people have been talking about? Uh, that's beyond them now. It's time to focus on playing hockey that gets you into the playoffs. We'll see how they fare. But I like Philly. I like Philly full game too, but I like them more in the first period here. I think the first period, they come out strong. Fedotov in net. I think I saw enough from him that I think he's ready to have a solid game, give the Flyers a chance to win this one. So those are the primary looks for me. I did like the over initially because I thought maybe we'd see Harrison. I, I, I've got a small piece of the over, but I got to admit I'm a little bit uh, less bullish on that with the Fedotov news, because he could be really good. If he's anything like he was against the Islanders, <laughs> that was pretty damn impressive. So the primary looks for me, Flyers first period money line, uh, around plus 105, at lean to the full game as well. Alex, what do you think here? A big one with the Flyers and Sabres. You know, I, got, I just got to say, I, I don't feel bad for either one of these teams for being in the position that they're in. Like I said, they're hanging on by a thread, trying to fight for the playoffs. And, and the biggest reason for that with both these clubs is their goaltending, not addressing certain goaltending issues. Flyers, like I said, of course, you weren't expecting that you're going to lose Carter Hart for the rest of the year. But at the same time, that wasn't just news that popped up out of nowhere. You could have planned for that. You could have planned better at the beginning of the year by just going out and get a better backup goal. You know, Arison didn't seem like he, you know, he won the job out of camp, but he wasn't going up against anybody. Felix Sandstrom, uh, I forget the other guy that was down there was a veteran. Uh, he's been the backup at Lehigh Valley all year. They, that wasn't much competition. So Arison, you know, was kind of gifted that spot. And, and Cam Peterson play. was a complete disaster, and he's not even right. with the team. They had to put him on waivers. He was so bad. Yeah. So, so this, so it, it, you know, same thing with Buffalo. We talked about the whole thing with, with you know, rushing Levi and and Pekka Lukanen and Eric Comrie. Just it was a bad trio. And so now you're in this spot and having to deal with now. Maybe Fedotov can you know save the day here, uh, but you know ultimately, you, you know, if you get into the playoffs, you're rolling with a Sam Harrison who's played the most minutes he's ever played in any league. And or, or this kid who was over in Russia, you know, just with, a few months ago and had decent numbers. But like I said, we still need to see what his mobility is like. Still need to see, you know, how he, how good he is facing live NHL action. And like I said, the nerves 
You got the nerves out of the way by throwing him into a game in the second period. Let's see how he handles, you know, going the routine of being a, a starter and going through his normal motions. So something I'm looking at. So I like the first period over here. Uh, one and a half minus a dollar twenty five. Nine and one the last ten meetings to the first period over with these yeah. two teams. Like you said, if Philly jumps out early, we can just rely on them to get two goals and cash that one for us. All right, first period over, 9-1 and one in the last 10 meetings with the uh, Flyers and the uh, Sabres. Uh, so interesting matchup here. Again, uh, look for the, uh, as far as the um, props here tonight in this game, you know, not as big of a prop game for me, but uh, certainly Forster. It feels like a game where, you know, Konechny's been a little quiet lately. I think it might be time for him to get going a little bit for the uh, Flyers. You know, I would stick for Buffalo with Thompson. With and certainly JJ Paterka, Turka, Turka. I mean, he's just been sensational. Another phenomenal game from him against uh, Washington. Uh, Paterka is still the number one player prop right now for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Certainly, value wise and production wise, he's been absolutely tremendous. All right, Colorado and Edmonton. Uh, this should be spectacular. It seems to always be a phenomenal game uh, when these two teams meet up. Edmonton minus 130, home favorites, uh, six and a half the total in this game. And I remember the last game between these two teams very well, where it was it was a breakneck pace. It was an absolutely up and down affair. And yet that game stayed under the total because it's there were some posts, there was some near misses, uh, some shots went wide. Uh goaltending was very good that night, too, from both Georgiev and Skinner uh, in that game as well. But that easily could have went over the total. That game was an overpaced big time. And even though it ended 3-2, it was one of those games, don't be fooled by the final score. That game was just breakneck pace between two just gifted offensive teams, two gifted teams as far as skill uh, is concerned. There were 77 combined shots uh, in that game, 43 by Colorado, 34 uh, by Edmonton. And I know we've seen two unders this year. Uh, well, actually, just the one game this year. That's going back to last year where it went under. But I kind of think we see something a little more uh, in terms of offensive production tonight. But what I like especially is the first period over. That in particular tonight I do like. And maybe even a first period both teams to score tonight as well, which I think uh, is appealing to me. I think full game over. This is over trifecta, but I like the first period looks a little bit more. First period over and first period both teams to score. Because I know it was 0-0 when they played uh, after, uh, in March last week. Last month in Edmonton, it was a great late Saturday night game. I remember it. Uh, but that first period, man, there could have been there could have it could have been a two two first period. It was 17 combined shots on goal in the first period of that game. Uh, so, again, there could have easily been uh, a bunch of chances and goals both ways in that game. Uh, and then the floodgates opened later. And of course, by the time they did, it was still a little bit too late. Uh, for the uh, full game over to cash. But I think you're going to see a little more offensive finish, especially with Colorado back-to-back on the road. I could see a little fatigue on defense from them tonight. It's not like Edmonton defensively has played as well. You know, St. Louis, they beat them. They made all kinds of blunders, bad pinches, breakdowns, turnovers galore, and Dallas made them pay for it the other night in that 5 nothing shutout. So I think the first the over trifecta is in play here, but I especially like the first period over, first period both teams to score. But that's not all. You know what else we're doing? Five straight have gone past regulation between these teams going back to that playoff series two years ago. Four straight regular season meetings have gone past regulation. And I'm seeing out there at FanDuel, one of our favorites and as far as the draw is concerned, plus 370 uh, at FanDuel. Better believe it. I'm on the draw here. Colorado Edmonton draw plus 370. And that's the one thing that we did hit that last Colorado Edmonton game. We didn't get the overs, but we got the draw in that 3 2 Colorado win in Edmonton last month. Four straight regular meetings have gone past regulation. And I think we see another one. How can you not? How can you go against that uh, with how many close and overtime games we have seen with these two teams? So draw plus 370, uh, and it jumps off the page at you. No question about it. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Avs, Oilers. Yeah, my only play in this game is the draw. Like you said, five in a row. And it's a spot where a team, both teams need the points. Both teams play each other tight. Uh, and whether this ends up being a 3-2 game or if it ends up being a track meet, I, I expect it to be close and go past 60. So uh, I can use the draw. All right, liking the uh, draw as well. I mean, it's hard not to, especially at plus 370. I was a little surprised it was that high uh, with the draw here, plus 370 for four straight times where these two teams have gone past regulation. As far as props go, uh, Fogel on the second line, there's still value. 
Uh, Hyman seems to do damage against Colorado, so Hyman might be a good look here tonight for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, on Colorado, Jonathan Drouin, absolutely. He's rolling right now with McKinnon and Rantanen. He got another goal and another multi-point game last night. Lackanen is starting to heat up on the second line for the Colorado Avalanche as well. Uh, I think they're definitely good. The top two prop looks for me for the uh, Colorado Avalanche. Drouin and Lackanen, as far as value is concerned and the way they're producing right now for the Avs. All right, Seattle and Anaheim. We go from that huge game and two legit cup contenders and West contenders to this game. Playing for exercise, Seattle and Anaheim. Uh, the Kraken minus 170 uh, road favorites, uh, five and a half the total uh, here in this game. Uh, I think when you look at this one here, um, Seattle and Anaheim, there's no way I'm laying minus 170 on the road with Seattle. I will not do that the rest of the season. And Anaheim is off a win, a very rare win against Calgary, that predictable spot where we thought the Flames might be a little bit uh, vulnerable as bigger home favorites like they often are. And sure enough, they lost to the uh, Anaheim Ducks in that game. So Anaheim trying to build on a uh, rare win against Calgary. They're coming back home off a road trip. So this is a little Malinsky special here, five road games back home. Um, but I'm still not at all interested uh, in the Seattle side. Uh, it looks like, by the way, that um, Philip Grubauer will be in net for uh, Seattle, not confirmed. Lukas Dostal is in net for Anaheim. And I said on the show earlier that I do on Fridays with Jimmy the Bag on Pub Sports Radio, I said if Dostal is in net, I'm, that might push me more toward taking Anaheim uh, here in this game. He is. I think I might pull the trigger on Anaheim. And I said if it was Gibson in net, I'd for sure be on the over, five and a half. I also said that if Dostal is confirmed in net, I still might stick with the over. And I think I will stick with the over. Uh, Dostal's a, right now, he is better than Gibson. There's no doubt. And he's not exactly the goalie you want in there for Anaheim if you're going to bet an over. But, you know, it's five and a half. As good as Dostal is, is that defense going to hold up? It's not exactly a great defense at the moment. And Gudas being out for Anaheim, you know, one of their better, you know, shut down defensemen. Uh, no question about that. Uh, and of course, then for uh, Seattle, they got Vince Dunn back and it's improved them offensively. I think they could probably score some goals even against Dostal. And I certainly think Anaheim can find the uh, back of the net. Now, Mason McTavish is out once again. It's unfortunate. He's had an injury marred season. But at the same point in time, you know, Mason McTavish has had these injuries and it's clearly affected his season. He hasn't had the season he hoped for and he hasn't been healthy. And I don't think he's been. And that's been a big part of it as well. So I think when you look at this situation here right now for the um, Anaheim Ducks, uh, I think they still should be able to score some goals here. So I'm going to go with them. I'm definitely going to go over five and a half because uh, I'm already on that from earlier today. Uh, I'm going to take a shot now with Anaheim with Dostal confirmed. If, if it was Gibson, I would not have any piece of Anaheim uh, in this game with John Gibson. But with Dostal in net, I think I'll take a chance here. Plus 150. Uh, in that range is what you can get still with the Anaheim Ducks in this game. And I'll split that with the team total, which is over two and a half here at around even money, uh, plus 100. Another thing to keep in mind, too, with Seattle is that they got lit up by L.A. the other night. You know, L.A. is a good team, but five goal type of team on a nightly basis. They just only scored two last night <laughs> against San Jose. This Seattle defense has definitely not been good during this bad run they've had. So I think Anaheim can get to three. So. Ducks team total over two and a half, little sprinkle on the Ducks money line, and the full game over five and a half uh, for me in this one. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Seattle, Anaheim. Yeah, I'm just going with first period over and full game over. These are cheap prices, cheaper numbers. And like I said, this is kind of a game. Two teams playing for exercise. Just roll the puck out there. Chris Otto made a great point in the chat. Who's blocking shots for either one of these teams right now? with a, a handful of games left. This, no, they got their golf people. course tee times ready. You know, you want to be able to get to that golf course. No one wants right. to break a hamstring or anything like that, blocking a exactly. shot, break a, break a foot or something. Yeah, yeah, and, and we've seen eight of the last nine meetings between these two teams go over in the first period. So, uh, yeah, give me both of those. I got, got a dollar ten on each. Well, over one and a half in the first period, over five and a half full game. And, of course, here he is on screen now. You see him, the man, the myth, the legend here, Jimmy Murphy. He's got a tee time for the eye test Monday to Friday, 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time with Pierre Maguire. Jimmy, what's going on? Not much, guys. Busy, busy. How about you? Good. Good to have you with yeah. us. Um, before we get to uh, your thoughts on the games uh, that we're talking about for Friday, little Bruins talk. Uh, what a win for them uh, last yeah. night against the Carolina Hurricanes. I was so impressed. I mean, to be out 3 nothing 
in the first period, jump on the Hurricanes like that, and then shut it down, play that shutdown game with the lead, and cruise to a 4-1 win. So impressed with Boston. I think that's one of the best wins they've had in quite some time. Yeah, easily. And I, I, even the Nashville win earlier this week was quite impressive, given how hot Nashville's been as of late. But look, I go back to a couple of weeks ago, guys, um, you know, and I haven't talked to you for a while. So uh, forgive me if I forget that we, we might have spoke about it already. But, you know, Bruins head coach Jim Montgomery reeled into them and uh, bag skated them at a practice a few weeks back. Uh, and really, you know, yelling at them. We could hear it from the press box saying, wake the bleep up and what's, what's wrong with you? And uh, really gave it to them. And then he did the same when he met with us after that practice. He, he reeled into his players as well. So ever since then, the Bruins have been playing great two-way, responsible hockey, playing with a lot of purpose uh, and, and really giving it their all out there. No, no nights off, no periods off, no shifts off. Um, and that's all you can ask for at this time of year. So they're rounding into form right at the right time. And I agree with you. That was probably uh, one of their best wins of the year. I also think, too, that, you know, you got to look right now at the way that they're in division right now, that they're setting themselves up is tomorrow they could really essentially seal the Atlantic division with a win over the Florida Panthers. And oh, yeah. the Panthers are now coming in banged up no Aaron Eckblad a couple other guys out as well so the Bruins win that they go up six points uh with just over a week left in the season so uh they're in good shape right now and I think the biggest question mark surrounding the Bruins now is who will be the goalie when the playoffs start yeah absolutely and uh it's going to be tough decision because don't look now Swayman's starting to get it going again he's starting to get it going yep. again for the uh, Boston Bruins and look Allmark uh, we know um, he, he had a struggle early on. He's been great lately, but Jeremy Swayman struggled early. He's picked it up lately. Mm -hmm. So this is going to make it a very, very tough decision as far as that goes. I just want to speak in a, Jimmy brought up Boston, Florida, which is ABC, by the way, national television tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. ABC, I don't know if ABC was thinking of flexing out of the, if, or even if they could flex out of the first game tomorrow of their doubleheader, but they must be glad they didn't do that or couldn't do that now. Because Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh is the first game of their doubleheader tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern. And now that game is significant for both teams. Tampa could actually move up to Toronto uh, for third in the uh, in the Atlantic. Uh, so positioning is still up for grabs for Tampa. And, of course, for Pittsburgh, they're playing for their season, their playoff lives. Yeah. Suddenly, Lightning-Penguins is an appealing game for ABC tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't do that and flex that, but... Yeah, Tampa Bay Lightning, I think, you know, I was on a podcast earlier or a radio hit earlier and people were saying, you know, what's the best matchup for the Bruins? And, you know, maybe I'm just starting to sound too much like a hockey coach or whatever. I just say, you know, I don't, I don't focus on that. They just got to focus on themselves. But if you ask me what's the worst matchup, I don't want anything to do with the Tampa Bay Lightning if I'm the Boston Bruins. And I'm sure a lot of other teams are saying that right now. Uh, you know, Vasilevsky is just in another world again. Uh, they are easily the scariest team, I think, in the Eastern Conference, if not the the whole NHL as we head into the playoffs, for those upper teams to look down in the standings at and, uh, and see in a wild card slot. But you know what? They might not be in a wild card slot by the end of this weekend. Uh, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs all of a sudden are looking in their rearview mirror and things are a lot closer than they seem and they're there. And uh, I don't think it's any certainty that the Maple Leafs are going to be in a division slot once the playoffs arrive, uh, they've got a lot of issues they got to sort out, and the Lightning are coming. I know the Leaf fans are all thinking for days, if not weeks, now. Hey, get ready for Florida in the first round. Well, hold on now, <laughs> you might be falling to a Ranger or Hurricane first round. You yeah. never know uh, when it's so, all said and done. So there's still a lot to be decided. By the way, uh, in the yep. uh, next two weeks, so the NHL, according to Jimmy, this has become our new segment on Friday <laughs> because you know we could be here for hours talking NHL, but we want to give Jimmy a chance to whatever's on his mind in the NHL outside of the Bruins. We give them a chance to talk about it. So what is it? What's on your mind? Uh, nothing. I mean, look, I, I, I've, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have been following, been covering a lot of the NC free eight NCAA free agency there. And uh, it's good to see Colin Graff finally find a team there in San Jose. I think that's going to be a great pickup for, uh, for the Sharks and a good fit for him. Um, and I did some coverage of the, the regionals in Providence there. We did a podcast out in Springfield. It was a blast. Uh, really good time seeing all the old UMass fans and some old UMass friends. Uh, but yeah, it's just a great time of year right now, guys. I, I can't wait for the playoffs to get going, but we still got a little to go. Yeah. 
And I'm sure uh, on on the ITS, I'm sure you up here are going to talk about all the things you said mentioned about college, the transfers that have been happening. I oh, saw yeah. the uh, roster thing. Over half of Northern Michigan's roster has pretty much gone to other schools now. Like, what what kind of, of shift? We you know we talk about with the NIL and the different things of, of influencing football and basketball, but what kind of shakeups has that led to in college hockey? I'm sure you guys might probably. Well, I don't know why they just won't say NIL is in college hockey right now because it is all about money. I mean, I know like UMass right now, there's a couple players uh, that they were trying to get and they just didn't have enough money to match the other schools. So, I mean, it's the same thing. They're just not putting a label on it, but it's, it's crazy right now. I've never seen it like this before. And, you know, I feel bad for a team like Northern Michigan there, you know, and even for my alma mater, UMass got, I think like four players left. Uh, via the portal. And then they had uh, like three other players sign in the NHL. Um, so it's tough. It's, it, it's, you know, I, I, part of me says, Hey, I am happy for the players that they have this opportunity. And of course, I don't know if you guys saw in Pierre's uh, son, Ryan McGuire, who was at Colgate has transferred to Northeastern through the portal. So, you know, it benefited him and it's, it's great for the players, but at the same time, I, I think it's that much harder for teams to stay in contention um, for the NCAA tournament and, and establish sort of a, a winning culture there because things are changing so quickly. Like usually, yeah. you know, you get your, your okay, it was, used to be, all right, we're going to lose a lot of seniors and juniors or we're going to lose some guys to the pros. Yeah. But now you get a guy for one year and all of a sudden he's gone. So um, it's just it just makes recruiting that much more important and, and the scouting that these coaches and those working under them have to do uh, it's just nonstop, 365 days a year. You know, I mean, people think, okay, the college season's over. Well, yeah, these guys are already gearing up to go to every possible, you know, spring and summer tournament and all the off-season junior leagues that these guys play in. So um, it just makes that scouting so much more important. So we'll see how it all unwinds. But, uh, look, I am happy, like I said, for players like Ryan McGuire, like Pierce Son there, who are now he's going to be in Northeast and he gets to play in a bean pot playing hockey yeah. east uh, big he's, time program for hockey yeah. no doubt yeah yeah so he's pumped and and the thing i said and I, and I tweeted out when i saw saw the with northern michigan specifically but i said if you're a program like a unlv kentucky you're in a place that has warmer weather and you're trying to you know bring some money in for your school now's the time to jump in and get into college hockey because yeah. Here's the thing. Do you yeah. want to play in Marquette, Michigan, or in Fairbanks, Alaska, or would you rather play in Tempe, Arizona, or Vegas, or Lexington? Well, it's funny you bring up Fairbanks and Alaska there because they actually were one of the first schools to really benefit off that. Um, they used it a lot right when it started. But now, I mean, you here's another one, though. LIU. We had their coach on, Brett Riley, earlier in, in the season, and um, he was just openly saying, yeah, we're going to just raid that thing. I mean, that's our only yeah. chance to compete with the big boys right now. Right. You know, we're an independent school. Uh, we're a small school. A lot of people probably didn't even know we exist. But we can sell people on like, hey, look, you come here. You're like 10 miles away from New York City. You can hop into the city. You're five miles away from JFK, from the airport there. You go, you know, one of the biggest airports in the in the world. Um, but you have a lot of scouts coming through here because there's what? There's the Devils. There's the Rangers, the Islanders. You have a lot of scouts that now will take their time to poke poke on over here and go to an LIU game to look at some players, especially if we're playing a big school. So you actually, you're absolutely right that those schools are going to start to use that. And I, I wanted to like Arizona state, I think would, uh, would be a great school to do that with their brand new arena and the weather. Yeah. I think Arizona state's building something like building a little yeah. hockey out there, like building yeah. a program that's going to be like in the t college hockey tournament. Year yeah. In, year probably, out. You know, building a better program than the other team that plays in their building. Yeah, <laughs> that. that's, that's difficult. Though. I apologize. I, you know what? I shouldn't say that because they actually Arizona. If you look at them, they've got so many good prospects coming, and I it's yeah, it I is. feel bad for them. I, they'll, I, they'll, they'll look great. It's more a shot. Yeah, that's a shot at their ownership. I just want to yeah. make that clear. It's, it has yeah. nothing to do with management there. So no, I mean they're growing good. Like Tate Thompson, Austin Matthews, right there, two off the top of my head from the state of yeah. Arizona. You know, yeah, just, but look, uh, I mean, even some of the young players they got right now, like look at yeah. Logan Cooley and. Some yep. of the other guys they got coming, so but it's just what a mess that is. No, yeah. there's no doubt. Uh, by the way, Frozen Fours next Thursday. I'm gonna we're gonna do picks on this show next Thursday. For okay, that. I have to seven and zero, oh, Jimmy, last weekend. Wow, Jimmy nice. College hockey. Oh, I'll I recap it. I had Cornell. Best. I had Cornell plus one and a half. 
puck line against Denver. They lost by one, of course, yep. two to one. It was a close game, though. I had Minnesota, Boston over six and a half, high scoring. I said Boston used loaded offensively. That could go over the total. It did. And I also had the same game parlay Boston to win and Which over Boston six and a half. About? Boston mm-hmm. University, okay. BU Terriers. They beat Minnesota. Yeah, and Minnesota always goes out in this round of the yep. board seems. So there you go. It was Boston and over four and a half. Quinnipiac Boston College. I had that over six and a half. It cashed. I had this is the one I had to sweat, and I didn't think I would, but give Quinnipiac credit. It's the heart of a national champion from last year. That that game went to overtime, but I had Boston College and over five and a half parlay. Yeah. Wow. Had to sweat it. Yeah. <laughs> had to sweat it, but it got there. And then I had Michigan in the over against Michigan State. So there you go. Oh, yeah, nice. well, Heck I'm, I'm really now, final guys, weekend for me. Yeah, the national title game is going to be a battle at Com Ave, one of the best rivalries in college hockey. BUBC, that's my prediction. Yeah. So I think so. I'll, I'll agree. pick BC to win it all. Oh, I got BU. I actually have BU plus two twenty five. Okay. Well, you can't. Hey, I don't think that's a bad bet at all. I mean, you got a number one pick here. on the team, Macklin yep. Celebrini. Macklin so, Celebrini. Yeah. He's yeah. he's he's the real deal. So hopefully, future Hawk. <laughs> yeah, that's well, right. wouldn't that be something, huh? You put think, him I do the think there are a few more back. game breakers, though, overall on Boston College, though, when you think of yeah, Wilkins there is and yeah. Ryan Leonard. And, and they're older. And all That's that. the key yeah. there, too. Yeah. They're older. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Leonard's been incredible. They oh, start talking amazing. about Ryan Leonard. Yeah. Because this guy's been just – every time I've seen BC play late in the season, conference tournament, now in this college tournament, the NCAA tournament, he's been unbelievable. He's he's the one uh, he's the one that got away from UMass. I mean, his brother yeah. went to UMass. He's from Amherst, Massachusetts. Uh, but he decided to go east and uh, go to Boston College. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, he's been terrific. I think he's been even th- maybe BC's best player, quite honestly, in the uh, tournament. That's how good he's been. But I'm, I can't wait for that. Those are two really good matchups uh, next week. Uh, it's going to be a great, as, as Pierre likes to say, it's the blue blood schools. You yeah. know, these are good traditional college hockey schools in there. And Denver and Michigan will, won't be pushovers for BU. And no, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not the so sold. Like, did you look at the way Denver won? Yeah. yeah. They just by margin, they're good on them to win close games, but yeah. I wasn't impressed with them. I mean, I, I didn't think, and I'm not saying this just because I'm a UMass fan. A lot of scouts agreed with me they were at the game. I don't think they deserve to beat UMass in that game. They they basically, for the majority so far of this tournament, if you watch them closely, it seems like they're they're plan is to just come out and sort of play prevent and hope for a break the other way or sort of wear down the opponent and then pounce at the end. Yeah. But that's not going to continue to work sooner or later. That's going to wear out and uh, they're going to get burnt. So um, if, you know, if I was going to pick an underdog between Denver and Michigan, I'd go with Michigan. I just think they're a way more well-rounded team. Gavin uh, Brindley, Frank yeah. Nazer, get excited, Alex, about Frank yeah, I Nazer. Know. Yeah, I know. Here yeah. For us the yeah. 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 yeah, fire the uh, naser. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be really good. I mean that that's sick between the legs pass and assist on that goal, yeah. Brindley. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. So it's uh, it's been a great tournament. Yeah, yeah, it is. Can't wait for the Frozen Four. All right, Jimmy, we'll rifle through quickly the Friday games that we've already talked about. Washington, Carolina, Jimmy. What do you think here? Oh, uh, this is the Jimmy Puck line of the century here. Give me the Carolina Hurricanes, and it sucks you're not getting too much value on that. Uh, but I, I'd also throw a little on Carolina puck line in the first period. Uh, you got to think the Hurricanes are ticked off after last night. I mean, that – and if – I don't know if you guys are watching the game, but every time they panned over to Brindamore on the bench, oh, yeah. I, there was like smoke coming out of his ears. He, yeah. I would not have wanted to be them in the locker room in the intermissions or after that game or today maybe uh, at the game day skate if they had one. Uh, knowing him, they probably did because he was so ticked off. But yeah, they're gonna Washington. I think guys has really hit a wall. Um, it was a great effort, a great coaching job by Spencer Carberry. But I heard you guys earlier. I was listening in as I wrote, um, talking about Lindgren, and you know, I, I think that uh, the clock has struck midnight for Cinderella there. It's it's starting to look like it. I mean, we've counted this team out a million times before. I know, Maybe and they always they again. always burn on. But I mean, they this is. <laughs> This just looks like they just – ever since yeah. that game a week ago when the Bruins beat yeah. them, yeah. That, that, I think that game just really deflated them. That loss really hurt them. Yeah, and they've had a tough schedule demanding. And now all, Ovechkin and Carlson played 25 minutes against Pittsburgh last night, and now they're going to have to play a back-to-back now. I mean, it's just not easy spot 
for sure yeah. for uh, Washington here tonight. And our guy Kochetkov is likely going to get a net for Carolina after. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this. Look, if they, if they right. win, I will um, go outside and I will kill a crow and I'll eat it. There you go. All right. Wow. <laughs> Kill a crow and eat it. Wow. Put some mustard on it, and I will. I will literally eat crow. Okay. I, I've I've had enough of I people speak. doing weird food shit on on <laughs> camera. Yeah, I heard. What, what I had enough day? with Zach Phillips doing uh, ridiculous eleven things. eggs, yeah, yeah, yeah. eleven <laughs> eggs. Well, uh, uh, egg for every goal in the Tampa Montreal game. Well, did he do it? He yeah, did. he did it. Yeah, on he camera. Did. Yeah, good for him. Good for yeah. him. Eleven eggs for eleven goals in that seven four game. That's a, uh, yeah, it's healthy though, isn't it? Isn't that what Rocky Balboa used to do? Yeah. Yeah, those are, those are different eggs back then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. All right, Rangers and Red Wings, Jimmy. Is this a tricky spot potentially for the Rangers after the emotional cauldron of the New Jersey game the other night? It is. It is. And, you know, but it's it's a tricky spot, I think, is a better, too, though, because the Red Wings have been off for a little, you know, and I, I don't like the rust. I think at this time you want to always be playing. You want – even though you you know you say oh fatigue will sit in, but you, you just kind of want to get into that groove as you head down the stretch here, and you want to just keep that momentum going. So it could go either way. They're fresh, or maybe they lack a little oomph to the game. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a draw in this one, guys. That's because I'm just so indecisive yeah. on, it, and I think it's gonna be a good game. I, it's obviously means so much more for the Red Wings right now. So uh, give me the draw on this. All right, the draw for Jimmy there. How about Philadelphia Buffalo? Oh, it should be fascinating to see what Flyers team we get after the huge emotional week. It's been the kumbaya yeah. with the Torts and his players. Torts mm -hmm. pouring, pouring his soul out to everyone a couple days ago. Uh, what do you think here? Well, you know, I started off my segment here talking about how Jim Montgomery, you know, got his team going when he laid the law down. And I look, I, I think if if I'm a Flyers player. And, you know, I was maybe not liking the way that, that Torts handles things, the way he coaches and saying, you know, maybe he needs to change his ways a bit. I think after that, you know, and you sent me that press conference there too, Ian, like after that one that he just sort of spilled his guts and explained what he's trying to do. And if that doesn't get through to you, then shame on you. Then you know what? You don't deserve to be not only just on the Flyers, you shouldn't be in the NHL because – I look, I'm not agreeing with everything the Torts does by any means, okay? But that guy spilled his guts. He was honest there, and he 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 made it pretty clear. It's not personal. It's not, okay? So, Brandon Dubinsky, get over it. Move on, man. Like, seriously, that guy needs He's to still get, bitter over that. He needs <laughs> to seriously get some, some help. Like, I mean, if you're still – like, you're a grown man, and you're still bitching about this how many years later, like, get over it. Um, but – Look, like I said, I think he is, Torch is a work in progress when it comes to adapting to a new generation, but he recognized that. And so I'm sure it got even more deeper behind closed doors. I think they're going to come out flying tonight. I, I like, uh, I'm going to go with a little Flyers reverse puck line in this. Give me the Flyers wow. minus one and a half. I, guess I thought I liked the Flyers because I have first period and a little on the full game. Wow, you're going even step further here with. Uh, yep. The uh, reverse puck line minus half you get. And that I'll tell you guys plus something. Plus two eighty or so. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, speaking of coaches and and stuff like that, uh, I'm hearing guys that there are big, big changes coming in Buffalo uh, at the end of this season. Uh, like lots and lots of changes. That's all I'll say. Kevin Adams losing his job. It's not just going to be behind the bench. No. It's going to be wholesale changes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep an eye out and for that. Maybe, maybe some team. big player personnel changes. You never know to shake everything. things up. Yeah, I think everything. everything's on the Blow it up. That's yeah. what I'm hearing. Wow. Uh, so it should be interesting. Uh, Buffalo, uh, lots uh, – could be a, could be one, quite the off season coming up for the yep. uh, Buffalo Sabres. Uh, what a game this – every time these teams play, it's a hell of a game. I mean, that 3-2 game in Edmonton last month, Colorado won in overtime. It was a blistering pace. It was an incredible hockey game. I'm sure it will be again tonight. Can't wait. Colorado, Edmonton. Jimmy, what do you think here? Well, I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of question marks all of a sudden around Edmonton. I mean, that game against Dallas, was that an anomaly? Was it just a blip? Or is is that Edmonton once again? They got again taken school? to the woodshed. They got schooled. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And, and, you know, what's been the knock about Edmonton through the years is that they can't play playoff hockey. Uh, they can't play two-way hockey. 
they've done a better job of it throughout this season. I'd give them credit, but I mean, that was just disgusting. So yeah. I, they, they got to show me that they have pride and they, and they can bounce back. And even if they lose this game, at least be in it, at least, you know, make it a competitive, hard fought playoff like game. So um, I think they'll do that. Uh, I think their coach has done a great job of, of helping them bounce back from stuff like that. Um, but I'll take uh, Colorado straight up on the money line in this. We like the draw because it's and been could see two three yeah. times it's gone to overtime with I these do. two. You know what? I'm on you. I'm on that with you too. But I, I also think Colorado good. squeezes out the win. Yeah, there you go. Plus 370 on the draw. And again, four straight times regular season meetings, Avs Oilers have gone to uh, overtime. So it's been just one great close game after another. We This is the game we were talking about just as you joined us, Seattle, Anaheim, just the over. I mean, two teams not going anywhere. Just roll the puck out, yeah. score some goals. Nobody's blocking shots, like we said. They got their tee times organized. You can't golf if you've got a broken foot from blocking a shot. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know, guys. See, I, I get where you're coming from, yeah. but knowing Greg Cronin, the head coach of the Ducks, the way I do, he doesn't give a shit what their record is right now. You're auditioning for a spot on his roster next year. You better bring it. And I, I don't care if you're the star player, or you're, you know, the third pairing D guy or the seventh defenseman that's coming down to play. Um, he, that's not how he's going to let you look at it. So, um, I, I like the Ducks in this. Give me the money line on the Ducks. I like that plus 150. Uh, I'd also bet that there's going to be a fight in this um, because I, I think that they they know what their coach likes. They know the physical hockey he likes. They're going to want to prove themselves to their coach for the final few games here this season. Um, Seattle, to me, is a whole other story. They're a mess. I think Anaheim overall, big pitchers headed in a much better direction than Seattle. Uh, I'd be really worried about Seattle and where they're headed this offseason. The one bright spot, though, since he's come back up, has been Shane Wright, and uh, I got to give him credit where it's due there. Okay, so let, let's do it. Let's have some fun with this. Jimmy's throwing it out there that there's going to be a fight tonight. Ross Johnston versus um, for Anaheim. You think he's got to be a candidate? Ross yep. Johnston. He's yep. been in a bunch of fights versus Oleksiak, maybe for Seattle. That uh, sounds like a good that. one. Jamie yep. Oleksiak's dropped the gloves on more than a few occasions. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, maybe that's your fight. Johnston and Oleksiak. Tanev's, a, you know, dropped the gloves a couple of times. Yeah, see, for see the guys, I was just going to say it. Yeah. Uh, Gudis is back. Yeah, Gudis is Gudis, back. Gudis is the man right there, yeah. guys. He, he could and if you want to fight, a nice, uh, huge, thunderous hit from him. Uh, yeah. you know, Gudis so. and Ross Johnston are the two guys are obvious yeah. fight candidates yeah. if there's going to be one for Anaheim. There's, there's no doubt. And Oleksiak's probably the most likely for uh, Seattle. So maybe we're going to see Johnston and Alexia. I'll laugh if that's the case, if we actually see that. If it's <laughs> Alexia <laughs> and uh, Johnston tonight uh, in that uh, Seattle. You know, it's, you know what it's going to be? They're going to be in the locker room, and they're, and they're going to go, scouts? What? Yeah. Scouts? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you, you go. If you don't like yeah. that reference, then you shouldn't be watching this podcast. <laughs> if you don't know what that means. No doubt. Uh, it's good we ended this game because this is a game I don't have a strong take on. Quite honestly, Vegas and Arizona. Vegas minus 170, road favorite, six the total. I've decided I don't want to go against Vegas at the moment. They're playing well. They've six of their last seven. They're ramping up for the playoffs. Uh, Logan Thompson's been outstanding, and I think he'll be back in net uh, once again tonight for the uh, Golden Knights. Arizona's kind of faltering a little bit. You know, they got whipped by the Rangers. Uh, hard fought. They're still, they're, the effort's still been very That's good thing, for Arizona. Yeah, right? but, yeah. 2-1 loss to Vancouver the other night. They're just not getting over the hump and winning these games, especially against the better teams. So I would lean Vegas. I just don't like the price. This is actually a crazy uh, under lean for me. I could see this being low scoring. It's been a lot of lower scoring games with Vegas and Arizona the last few head-to-head -head meetings. Uh, and with the way Thompson – Thompson's given up just one goal in like four or five of his last six starts. He's been that good mm -hmm. for Vegas. In I like that. I would lean under, lean to Vegas winning, but I don't like the price enough. So it's actually a pass. I do have a couple props I like, but we'll get to those after. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Vegas, Arizona. Yeah, it's a pass for me. Like I said, I haven't been backing Arizona much and probably won't for the rest of the season. They're doing the old alternating goalie routine, so it's a Vimelka night uh, for the Oats. And, and like I said, Vegas, they're rolling right now, but laying seventy, even laying a price in regulation, I'm not comfortable with it. So that's a pass. All right, what about you, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm going to pass as far as a side goes, and, and I, I kind of like your under bet. I might jump on that, but I, I do have a little uh, a little prop, and I mean, it's, you know, you go, it's not surprising. Give me uh, William Carlson right now uh, to get a goal 
and also to get over one and a half points. Uh, he's riding a five game point streak. He's he's been on fire. He's getting hot just at the right time. Yeah, for me, yeah, definitely. I I I don't argue with Carlson. Dorothy has yeah, got value. He's been good lately uh, for the uh, Golden Knights. Uh, and then for Arizona, Nick Bukestad. He just keeps on going, this guy. He's been incredible lately, Nick Bukestad, offensively, since uh, mm-hmm. Tourney put him in the top-line center spot. And I would go Cooley and Gunther. Cooley and Gunther have been very good lately for Arizona. And if you want to sprinkle on the the golden boy, uh, Josh Doan, son of uh, Shane Doan, he's cooled off a little bit, but he's still getting chances. Uh, feel free, because you're still getting really good prices with him as well. All right, great stuff. That's the uh, Friday uh, NHL card. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Hit the like button uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, Jimmy, we've got a huge month coming up of BetCasts here for the Ice Guys. So if there's any that you got a chance, even for just a few minutes, to pop in All right. and join us for these BetCasts, uh, you're going to want to join us. Here's the schedule. There it is. Five BetCasts coming up here in the month of April. Two more in the regular season, April 9th, April 16th, both on a Tuesday. Both, uh, you know, one is free, one is on Patreon exclusive. And then we've got three Stanley Cup playoff BetCasts, Monday, April 22nd, free, Thursday, April 25th, Patreon exclusive, and Tuesday, April 30th, Patreon exclusive. Five live BetCasts coming up here in the month of April. And for the the Patreon exclusive BetCasts, sign up. $10 $10 per month, patreon.com slash ice guys. That'll be your way to check out, to join us and tune in for those Patreon exclusive live bet casts, daily sides, totals, player props, bonus content, and plenty more available on the Patreon page for members. $10 per month, patreon.com slash ice guys. And check out the ice guys store as well. Uh, again, uh, 20% off all orders lasts just today and tomorrow. Iceguys.myspreadshop.com. Yeah, two days yep. left, save 20% off. And uh, like I said, we got everything in stock right now. You can get the hoodies, you can get uh, the shirts, the caps, everything right now. 20% off today and tomorrow only at iceguys.myspreadshop.com. There we go. Uh, good stuff. And Jimmy, the door's always open for you for one of those bet casts. I know, guys. Hop in. Yeah. I appreciate it. There you go. All right, we'll be back to wrap the show up with Best Bets and Bargain Bin Special coming up in just a moment right after we hear from our great sponsors, Boston Hemp. Boston and Pink, make sure you check them out and again get 20% off all orders on the website using the promo code ICEGUYS at bostonhempinc.com. Uh, we'll start with Jimmy uh, we, so we can uh, let him uh, get ready for the podcast coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern, 30 minutes away. Make sure you check that out. The eye test, Jimmy Murphy, Pierre Maguire, 4 p.m. Eastern. Jimmy, we'll go right to you. Bargain bin special of the night first. Anything that you like plus 300 or better prop wise tonight? Yeah, I got a I got a crazy one, just a crazy hunch. Uh, he impressed me last night. He was one of the few Hurricanes that showed up. He's not exactly known for his goal scoring, uh, but he got in a fight last night. He showed a lot of emotion. That's Jack Jury, the Harvard University product. Give me a goal by Jack Ur- Jack Jury for f- plus four fifty. I'm seeing on DraftKings here. Yeah, it's a heck of a price, and you're right. I like that scrap with Johnny Beecher. Uh, last night, yeah, uh, in that wasn't game. looking too good this no, morning. Uh, no, Jack Drury looks like <laughs> he can handle himself in a scrap. I, I'm yeah. very impressed. But plus, I'm even seeing plus five fifty uh, at FanDuel for uh, Jack Drury to score a goal. Carolina Hurricanes. So bargain bin special right there for Jimmy Murphy. All right, Jimmy, best bet. What do you got? Best bet is Carolina puck line for sure. There we go. 
There you go. Carolina minus one and a half puck line against Washington. Take care of business. Jimmy, we'll let you run. Have a great show. Right. Have a mm -hmm. great weekend. We'll you see too, you next guys. week. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. There he is, Jimmy Murphy uh, with us. All right, Alex B. Smith, bargain bin special of the night. What do you got? Yeah, we'll go to the big game uh, down in Raleigh. You got Washington taking on Carolina and a guy who is back in the lineup and in moving to the top line. And he's a huge piece of this franchise, just as big as Ovechkin, arguably. Tom Wilson, uh, you can get him to score plus 430 at BetMGM. I think that's an awfully high number for a guy who has stepped up in uh, some big-time moments. Big boys ball in big games. And I'm expecting that from Tom Wilson. So give me him anytime goal plus 430 at MGM. That's my bargain special for Friday. All right. There we go. I like it. Plus 430. A uh, really good price there uh, indeed uh, with uh, Tom Wilson for the uh, Washington Capitals to uh, find the uh, back of the net. I'm actually going to go back to the well tonight with my bargain bin special to a player. I actually used it the other night. It didn't come through, but it was against L.A. And L.A.'s got their flaws. But. They are also still a team that's capable of defending and capable of shutting it down. I can't say the same about the Anaheim Ducks, at least not on a consistent basis. I'm going to go back to the well with Shane Wright again one more time for the Seattle Kraken, plus 440 uh, at FanDuel. Uh, let's go with Shane Wright, plus 440 for the Seattle Kraken for my uh, bargain bin special of the night. All right, best bets for this Friday. Alex, what do you like for best bet? Yeah, we got to go with the... Philadelphia, Boston, first period over one and a half, minus $1.25, eight and one last nine uh, meetings between those two teams. It's a big game. Philly should be coming out fired up. Buffalo still has a puncher's chance. So I'm expecting fireworks early. I mean, the Flyers and the Sabres, first period over one and a half is my best bet. All right. Philadelphia, Buffalo, over one and a half, first period. And again, nine of the last 10 meetings between the Flyers and Sabres have gone over in the first period. So, Alex, riding that trend here for best bet for this Friday uh, NHL slate. My best bet for this Friday uh, NHL card. Uh, lots of good stuff to choose from. How about we go bold for a change? Let's take the Detroit Red Wings here. Plus 116, plus 115. I actually got plus 125 on this earlier in the day, but we've seen some Red Wings money come in uh, based on the uh, absence of Shesterkin and Jonathan Quick being in net instead. Uh, I think the Red Wings, look, not many teams have beat Tampa Bay lately. Detroit did uh, in their last game down in Tampa Bay. This is a huge game for the Red Wings tonight. Rangers off the emotional cauldron of the New Jersey game with quick and net as opposed to Shesterkin. I think it sets up nicely for Detroit to be a live home underdog here tonight. Detroit plus 115. My best bet for this Friday NHL card. That'll wrap up this edition of the show. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out. Reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For Alex B. Smith, for Jimmy Murphy, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Friday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. And we'll see you again tomorrow on Saturday for another edition of the Ice Guys.